Hello everybody, it is Leanne again, and today's lesson is going to be on one of my favorite topics, and that is writing the five paragraph essay. So, why are you here today? Well, you may have received an assignment from an instructor. Uh, you might be uh, anywhere from the college level down to middle school, maybe even earlier, I'm not sure. Um, but that would be part of the education process. Writing the five paragraph essay is something that you learn throughout your education and for many important reasons. Why? Because overall it improves your communication skills. Not just your written communication skills, but your oral communication skills. I want to touch on that briefly. Obviously today's video is going to be about writing and improving your writing skills, especially what we're going to focus on today is structure and organization. Because the five paragraph essay format really is focused on getting you to improve those skills and making sure that you communicate in a way that all of us are hardwired to receive information. Because writing this essay is not so much about you, the author, but about those people that you are communicating with, your reader, your audience. You need to tell them something, you're going to be telling them something with your essay, and they need to receive that information in a way that they understand. So since we were young kids, since we were little, we've been receiving information from our society, from the world, in a certain way. And when we hear it, we need to hear it in a way that makes sense to us. And the five paragraph essay does a great job of getting out a message and then reinforcing that message over and over. So you'll see how this process actually uh, will help and, and work, work for you in that way. So what does the five paragraph essay, how do you get started? Well, you get started with an outline. And if you are like me, I was very resistant to outlines whenever I was young. In fact, when a teacher would assign an outline, I would either do it after the fact, I would write my essay first sentence to the last sentence, and I would say, oh yeah, that's right. I think my teacher wanted me to turn in an outline. So then I would actually do my outline after I'd already written my essay or my paper or whatever. Sometimes if the teacher was smart and said, no, I want you to turn in your outline like a week or two before the paper is due just to make sure that you're on track and you're actually working on something, I would turn in some kind of crazy bogus outline that I never referred to again. And my final paper never looked like I, my outline because I didn't really understand how to use outlines. I'm going to show you my method that I've developed over the last 17 years teaching English classes. I have a comparative literature and English degree. I also have a law degree and I've been teaching college level courses for 17 years English and law classes for, for those of you who have been on my channel you know that um, but I want to show you this method that I've been using and it really shows you actually how to use an outline and use one efficiently and effectively so that you're not wasting a bunch of time um, you know writing and rewriting and having writer's block and all kinds of different things so the five paragraph essay format a lot of you are really familiar with this essay uh, you will see that, you know, you have your introduction, you have three main points, and three is the magic number, always in a five paragraph essay. If you were writing a seven paragraph essay, five would be the magic number because you would have five main points, five things that you were talking about. Because the first paragraph and the last paragraph in an essay are always the same thing. The first paragraph is always your introductory paragraph. It's always your introduction. And you can see here it always contains a thesis statement. And your conclusion paragraph is always your last paragraph. Those paragraphs in the middle, those are the ones that are actually going to support what you have to say. Okay, so very important that you have those supporting materials in the middle. A lot of people, uh, most people refer to that as the body of your paper. Okay, now, how does this help you with general communication? What's in it for you? Why do you think that your instructors keep assigning this to you over and over again? Why do you keep seeing it? Well, the reason why you keep seeing it is it's not just about learning how to write because you're thinking, I don't want to do anything with my life that is going to include me writing. So why do I need to know this? I mean, you know, I, I want to be uh, such and such. I want to be a football player. I want to be an actor. I want to do something that doesn't really, I don't think it's going to involve so much writing. Why do I need to learn this? Well, let me give you a little scenario here. That outline that I just showed you really does these things here. It tells somebody what you were going to say, right? It then says it with some support and then you tell them what you just said and it answers the question, so what now? Let me give you a real life example. 
Okay, what, let, let's say you wanted to go in and you wanted to ask your boss for a raise. Okay, so you walk in and you're nervous and you say, okay, all right, Miss, Miss Boss Lady, I just, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, but I want to tell you something. I think I deserve a raise. I deserve a raise because I've never been late, I've never missed a day, and I'm your hardest worker here. Okay, what did you just do? You told her what you were going to say. Okay, now let's tell her with some support. Okay, okay, Miss Boss Lady, let me just go into detail here. You know, since I started working here, I've never been late. In fact, I get here early every day. I make sure that my workstation is perfect so that I'm ready for anything. So when, when that time clock says, uh, you know, clock in, I clock in and I'm here and I'm ready and I'm prepared to go. Not only that, I've never missed a day. Even whenever I've not been feeling great or I've, I, you know, I've been here for you. I put this job first. And when I am here, in which I'm always here, as you just heard, I am always here. I put in 110%. I know that you know that I'm your hardest worker because it shows in all of my performance re reviews. You always say in my performance re reviews that I am a really hard worker. For all of those reasons, for all of those reasons, Ms. Boz Lady, I think that I deserve a raise and I think you think I deserve a raise too based on all of my performance reviews and all of this criteria. So when can I expect to see the raise in my paycheck? Okay, what did you do? You just did all of those things. That's a really hard thing for her to come back and say, well, I guess you don't deserve a raise. I mean, she's gonna have to come up with a reason like, well, there's really not that much money uh, we don't have the money. She's going to have to come up with a reason that doesn't have to do with all of those three great things that you said about yourself. You didn't write it down. You said it orally. So that five paragraph essay outline can be used for speeches in education environment, but it can also be used for real life scenarios when you want to be persuasive. When you want to tell somebody something, when you want to do something important and you want to make a point and you want to communicate clearly and efficiently, make sense? So your teacher's not crazy. Your teacher didn't just assign this just because, okay? All right, so let's get into this. All right, so we know that that paragraph number one is going to be an introductory uh, paragraph. So what is in an int introductory paragraph? This one always gives people headaches, right? Well, you're gonna have a thesis statement, okay? And you're gonna have an attention getter or some kind of a hook because you don't want somebody to just look at this and like, that sounds really boring. I don't think I'm going to read this. There's five paragraphs here. Let me move on to something else. Okay, you want something that's going to be interesting and you're also probably and most likely should include some kind of background or historical information. You don't wanna just drop the reader into some kind of crazy essay about something. You wanna give them some context. Why am I here? Why am I floating around in this essay all of a sudden? You want to give them, you want to ease them into it a little bit, okay? So that is what is generally included in an introductory paragraph. Now, in a thesis statement, what's in the thesis statement? That's part of your introductory paragraph, right? Well, you have your topic. This is my formula here, um, and this is what a thesis statement is. You have your topic plus a general direction plus three main points. So. You can have some topic, for example, what if your topic was bees? Okay, that's a nice general topic. Your general direction would be something like how you feel about bees. Okay, well, I like bees. I mean, when I think about bees, I generally like them. Your three main points would be three things that you would wanna say that support your topic and your general direction. Well, why do I like bees? Well, I like bees generally because um, I like the way they buzz, I like that they fly, and I like that they make honey. Okay, so those are three like kind of cool things about bees, right? I like to use what's called a because um, a statement because it forces me to remember whenever I'm writing my draft thesis statement, I have to answer the question, why do I feel this way about this topic? Okay, so here's an example of my uh, because statement, I like bees because they buzz, they fly, and they make honey. Make sense? Okay, so it's a real quick and easy way uh, to remember how to write a thesis statement, okay? That should help you whenever you have that 
writer's block and you're wondering, my teacher said I have to write a thesis statement. I have no idea what that is or how to do it. Okay. Now, the other really cool paragraph or different paragraph in a five paragraph essay is the conclusion paragraph. Okay, so what's in a conclusion paragraph? Well, here's where you're just going to sum up your topic, which we were talking about bees, your general direction, which is that we like them, and your three main points, and we talked about those three main points. Okay, you're also going to do something is where you're going to answer the question, so what now? because you really wanna make sure that your reader knows that it's over, I'm done talking now. I don't wanna leave them with any questions like, is that it? Or, I don't know, what happened? Aren't you gonna tell me the rest of the story? You don't wanna leave your reader with any questions. You want them to know for sure that you are done talking, you have come to some kind of a conclusion. Maybe you've learned something with this you know, cathartic experience that you just had where you told them something. Um, you want to make sure that it's clear that you've ended. Make sense? All right. So now those three paragraphs in the middle, those three main point paragraphs in the middle, what are they? Now, I have another video. It's called Writing Paragraphs with Leanne. It's a very, very basic video. Again, just about structure, just like this one is. We're not going to get into too much style today, okay? You know, we're not going to write anything like grand and, you know, it's not a master's thesis today. We're going to write something really simple, kind of like I like bees, okay? But we're going to do something very simple. But that writing paragraphs, it's about a 10 or 11 minute video and it's just about how to write paragraphs. Well, these main point paragraphs are those types of things, right? So you might want to check that out. You can or can't. But here's what's in those main point paragraphs. We've got a topic sentence, three to five supporting sentence, sentences, and because these paragraphs live within an essay, okay, a five paragraph essay, they're gonna have something called a transition sentence. So a topic sentence is really the main point of that sentence. So this is not your topic, it's not B's, okay? The main point would be um, bees making honey, okay, or bees flying, or bees buzzing, okay? It's one of your three main points, okay? Plus the general direction, well, I like bees because they make honey, okay? And then three to five supporting sentences about why that's a cool thing about bees. And then you're gonna have a transition sentence, which is really just gonna be that main point. So let's say I really like bees because of the buzzing sound that they make, plus the main point of the next paragraph, which the buzzing would then transition into how much I like that they fly. So you would say something about, you know, so bees are really cool because they buzz, but yeah, they're really cool too because they fly. Okay, so you're going to talk about the main point that you just talked about, and then you're going to transition into that next paragraph so that your reader's not so shocked, like, hey, you were just talking about buzzing, but now you're talking about flying? Like, I'm so confused. You want to ease them into it. You want to let the reader know, hey, I'm about to change the subject. Not entirely, because we're still talking about bees and how cool they are, but I'm going to talk about a different thing about bees. Okay? Now, here is my method. My method on how to use this outline that I've been going over, that everybody kind of knows this outline, the outline's no secret, but here is my method on how to write the five paragraph essay so you're not wasting a bunch of time and you're gonna do it efficiently and you're gonna get rid of that writer's block, that sitting at the keyboard like, oh my gosh, I can't even write the first sentence, I'm so stressed out because my teacher said I have to have an attention getter and I have to have some kind of a hook and I have to be really exciting in my first paragraph or nobody's going to read my paper. <laughs> I can't write this. I don't even know where to start. Okay, here it is. This is my seven step method to writing the five paragraph essay format. Okay, so first thing that you're going to do is you're going to brainstorm your thesis. Okay. You need to think about what is my thesis? Well, we already wrote one about bees. What did that take, like 10 seconds? Okay, I thought about bees, and then I thought about um, how I feel about them, and then I thought about three things that support how I feel about bees, okay? You might be really lucky. Your teacher may have already given you like a reason um, why, okay, uh, that you should be writing this paper. For example, what did you do over the summer? Or maybe they said, maybe they didn't give you a specific topic like that, or maybe they said you need to write a narrative essay, or you need to write a descriptive essay, or you need to write something that's persuasive or argumentative, 
okay? Maybe they kind of gave you an idea of what direction you need to be in, but they didn't give you a specific topic. Now today, we're not gonna be writing about anything where we have to do any kind of research or cite to our sources. We don't have time for that. In fact, I'm gonna do a whole nother video series on how to write research papers and use outlines. You're gonna be like, yay, this is the greatest thing ever, because I'm gonna show you how easily how to slide research into a great paper and how you don't get you know teachers going crazy like, will you plagiarize this, okay? We're going to work on that, okay, but not today. All right, so first thing, you're going to brainstorm the thesis. You're going to figure that out, and then you're not writing that introductory paragraph first because that's crazy because most people get stuck there. Look where that is. That's all the way in step number six. We're actually writing it last, almost last, because the last thing you're going to do is you're going to proof and edit your draft because you're not going to turn your draft in as your final. You're not going to do that. You're going to take a minute, and you're going to relax get away from it and then you're gonna go back and you're gonna look at it with a fresh set of eyes and they're gonna fix all of those typographical and grammatical errors that you made right yes you are I know you are you're gonna give yourself enough time to do that I love you okay and then you are going to maybe work stylistically on some things change some things but you are going to stay true to your structure and you are going to stay true to your organization because that's what we're gonna work on today okay and that's what all the rest of these steps are about. All right, so you're gonna write three topic sentences. Hmm, what does that mean? And then you're gonna write all of your supporting sentences for paragraphs two, three, and four. What, we're going so out of order. What is wrong with you, crazy lady? We're gonna go through it, trust me. And then you're gonna write transition sentences for two, three, and four. It's so out of order, right? And then we're gonna write our conclusion and then we're gonna write our introduction. You're like, what is wrong with this crazy woman? Well, let's just do it. I'll just show you so you're not so crazy, okay? Let's brainstorm our thesis. Now remember, your thesis was a topic, a general direction, three main points, and a because statement. We wrote one about bees, okay? Now, it just so happens while I'm doing this video right now, my chihuahua and my German Shepherd have come into the room and I had to ask them to exit. Now, I don't know what they're going to do now, but it just made me think, okay, my topic should actually be my Chihuahua because I have very strong feelings about my Chihuahua. And I think that you guys probably can guess what those strong feelings are, right? Oh, I know you think about those strong feelings. It's like how you probably feel about your baby if you have a baby. Oh, yes, I know. Yeah, I hate him. I hate him. I hate him so much. Okay, for all of you people out there judging me right now, okay, I just want you to know, I don't really hate my chihuahua, but it's going to make for a really fun thing to write right now, isn't it? <laughs> okay, all right, so my three main points that I'm going to brainstorm right now, why on earth would I hate my chihuahua? Well, I should, if you hate something, you should really be able to come up with three things really, really fast, right? So my topic is my chihuahua, okay? My general direction is that I hate him okay three things about him that I hate that support the idea that I hate him oh my god he's gross he's loud and you know what he kind of scares me he scares me again just probably you know he scares me now I want to translate this into a because statement because because this is just a draft and you'll see at the end why it's just a draft but because reminds me that I have to answer the question why, and it's also kind of a fun sentence, okay? So, I hate my chihuahua because he's gross, he's loud, and he scares me. See how fun and easy that was? We just brainstormed a thesis statement. That's all we're gonna do with our introductory paragraph right now until step six. So stop trying to write your introductory paragraph. Stop, pull it, okay? We're gonna move on. Because right now, what are we doing? We're writing topic sentences, okay? So, we're going to go to paragraph oop, number two. We're moving on to paragraph number two. And remember those three main point paragraphs, our body, they are really important because they support our whole ideas, our paper. So a topic sentence, if you remember, was the main point plus a general direction. So we can simply write something, and I'm simply gonna write something. I hate my chihuahua because he's gross. Isn't that easy and fun? Okay, now I'm not going to write the rest of my paragraph number two. You want to know why I'm not going to write the rest of my paragraph number two? Because sometimes I get writer's block and I get hung up. And the other thing is, it's really easy to write these topic sentences right now. It also helps me stay organized and on point 
because I might start writing about something else, like why he's loud or one of those other things that I was going to talk about, or I might get off point. I want to make sure that I, in my head it's very clear and I want to stay true to my outline. So I'm going to go ahead, boom. I'm going to go ahead and write my topic sentence for paragraph number three right now, and it is, I hate my chihuahua because he's loud. See, staying true to my format. While we're at it, let's write our topic sentence for paragraph number four. I'm just going to stay in the same formula. Remember, I'm not doing stylistically, I'm not writing a master's thesis. Remember, I said I wasn't going to do that. This isn't about the, I'm not, I'm not writing, you know, War and Peace. This isn't, this is going to be something very simple for today's purposes because we're working on structure and organization. So, I hate my chihuahua because he scares me. See how that stays true to our thesis uh, statement, our because statement, that we, all we did was take it and we expanded it out into three different sentences. Mm. Okay, see how they all have the word because in it? Ooh, look at us. Okay, now, now our next step is to go back to paragraph number two. We're gonna write all of our supporting sentences for these three main body paragraphs. You see how it's just writing itself? We're only about 20 minutes into this video and we haven't even been writing the whole time because I've been blathering a lot. Okay, let's go up and start writing again. So now we're gonna go in paragraph number two. And you can see I've already worked on these because it's the magic, it's the magic of editing. Okay, so in paragraph number two, okay, I'm writing my support sentences for why my chihuahuas gross. Oh look, he stinks, he drools, and he always has snot on his nose. All three, and remember you write three to five supporting sentences, and these sentences should support why I hate him and why he is gross. <laughs> yes, all three of those things talk about grossness, and they support the reason why you would hate that thing about him. Right? Right? All right then. So now we're not gonna write our transition sentence, which we know needs to go here, because that would complete paragraph number two. Because we wanna see, before we transition into this next paragraph, don't we wanna see what else is in that paragraph before we move from this one to this one? Stop writing that transition sentence because you don't know what's happening down here yet. You don't have a full handle on it. Why are you writing it? Stop it. Okay, now let's move on to paragraph number three and write those support sentences so we can figure out what that paragraph is really gonna be about. There it is. Okay, support sentences. For this one, I hate my chihuahua because he's loud. The high-pitched whining is constant. It's so loud it keeps me up at night. I can't stand the horrible noises he makes. Three support sentences, all about how loud he is, all about why I would hate that thing about him. Are you following me? Yes, I know you are because you are brilliant. Okay, next, paragraph number four. Same reason we didn't write the transition sentence there the same reasons we didn't write in the other one. Now we're moving on to paragraph number four and we are writing support sentences for paragraph number four. All right, look at this. I hate my chihuahua because he scares me. <laughs> he, really, he really does scare me a little bit. Okay, his eyes are so creepy. I have bad dreams about the way he stares at me. I'm beginning to think he's possessed. I'm beginning to think he's possessed. These are all reasons why my chihuahua scares me. These are three sentences that support that idea. Again, I haven't written any transition sentences yet because I haven't gotten to that step yet, but now you can see how I have developed these three supporting paragraphs, right? They're almost done. Now I just need to go in and slide in those transition sentences, okay? Now remember, a transition sentence is going to be the main point that you, you're, you're in, and you're gonna transition, it's gonna be main point plus next main point, okay? So you're gonna move into the next one. So let's go back up to paragraph number two. Here we are, look like magic. We're back at paragraph number two, and we're gonna write a transition sentence, the first part of which is gonna talk about why he's gross, and it's gonna transition into him being loud, okay? So let's see what's going on here. He's so gross that I try not to look at him but that doesn't help because I can still hear him. <laughs> yes, hate, so much hate. But do you see how the first part was about gross? The second part was about here. And it's easing the reader. 
see we're communicating with our reader. It's, the, it's easing the reader into the next thing. We're still staying completely on point with why we hate my chihuahua and we're moving from gross to loud. Okay, and so the very next sentence, boop, okay, I can still hear him is I hate my chihuahua because he's loud, right? Now, we have to transition from loud to scary. So let's see what I did here. The constant squawking has put me on edge and now I'm beginning to fear him. Okay. So all this noise, all this noise has created this fear. Like I'm, it's helped to generate this. I'm getting scared. Okay. So now we went from noise to fear. Do you see how we're easing our reader from noise to fear? See, that's what transition sentences are all about. It really takes you from being a B student to an A student whenever you really can transition well. Okay. Now, Paragraph number four. Now this is a special transition because you're not transitioning from a main point to a main point. You're actually transitioning from a main point to a conclusion. So I want you to think about main points because it's narrow. It's just one point um, of the three main points. Okay. And in this case, it's I'm scared of my chihuahua. Okay. So that is a narrow thing, but the conclusion, what does it do? It sums up all of the main points plus your general direction and your topic, right? So it actually is a broader thing. So you're going to go from your transition from narrow to broad. So you want to make sure that your first part of what you're talking about is you are going to be talking about the narrow thing. You're going to be talking about the scary and then you're going to let the reader know I'm moving back into the, the broader thing. I'm moving back into the broader thing. I'm going to be ending this soon. I'm, I'm bringing you back out from narrow topics, narrow examples, and I'm moving back out. Okay, so remember this transition here, this special transition sentence goes from narrow to broad. So let's see what I did. Okay, being scared of my chihuahua's cold, dead eyes haunts my soul. I got a little dramatic here. But my hatred for him is born in his whole being. See how it went from his being scared of his cold, dead eyes to his whole being, because his whole being is his grossness, his loudness, and also his cold, dead eyes. Okay. So his whole being. So I went from narrow to broad, you see, so you can use that formula anywhere on any topic that you're using narrow to broad here in this transition sentence. Okay. So next step, we're actually done. We finished the middle of the paper. Yay. That's our draft for the middle of our paper. Are you excited? And we're only six minutes after where we were before. All right. So now we write our conclusion. So like magic, um, here's our conclusion. <laughs> Don't you love how quickly things just happen on video? Okay. So now the first sentence of your conclusion, um, sometimes people will put in conclusion or you want to kind of like bring them in. I just had that it, it's born in his whole being. Okay. You could say in conclusion, um, blah, blah, blah. I chose without question. Okay. I'm certain. <laughs> okay. Without question. I hate my chihuahua. What did I do here? Because in the conclusion, you want to do a couple of things. You want to sum up your topic and your main, your topic and your general direction and your three main points. So we're going to do that right now. So when I say without question, I hate my chihuahua, I'm summing up my topic, my chihuahua and my general direction. I hate him. Now I need to revisit my three main points. Okay. It's best if you revisit in the order in which you presented them. It's always best to revisit in the order in which you presented them. We presented them in gross, loud, scary. Okay. So we need to talk about something gross. He is, gr he is a gruesome, repulsive being. That's gross. The loud, horrific, that's loud. The loud, horrific noises he makes should be coming from something larger. Okay. Again, these all support hatred. Now we need scary. His stare is unrelenting. And we did refer to his eyes and his stare being scary. This, the reader will remember that his stare is unrelenting. It's almost supernatural in or origin. Remember I said he was possessed. He cannot be of this world. I fear him 
and I said, now I say I fear him and I hate him completely. So I have summed up my topic, my general direction and my three main points. I have revisited them. So I did what I, when I asked for the raise, I told them what I was going to say. Okay. I told them with support. I told them again what I just said. I told them what I just said. Okay. Now we have to do something else. We have to answer the question. So what now? Because if we leave it like that, we haven't given the, the reader could say, well, what now? Well, what would happen? What are you going to do with this crazy chihuahua? Did, did, I mean, did you learn anything? I mean, is there more to the story? Tell me more about this chihuahua. I mean, they may have questions. Okay. So here we go. All right. So now you need to answer the question. What now you need to make sure you leave them with something. So this is what I did with it. It is for this reason that I have decided to dress him in cute little outfits and hopes that I will make him appear less frightening. Oh, look at me. Okay. Perhaps someday with enough therapy and pictures of him in cute outfits, I will begin to see his inner beauty. Oh, isn't that heartwarming? Don't you feel better now? Okay. Did you feel a little bit better now? All of you people that hated me, all of you people. Yeah. Okay. So you see how I kind of went somewhere with it. It, it sort of, we grew from that. That's what you need to do in your conclusion. That's what makes a full supported sort of conclusion. All right, but we're not done yet because we still have to write our introduction. So now let's go back and it's going to be a whole lot easier to write your introduction. You're still going to struggle a little bit with your attention grabber and you're still going to, you know, the hook and all of that stuff. But now you know what you are selling because you just wrote the whole rest of the paper. You have all of your supporting points. You have your conclusion and you know where you went with it. You know, you answered the question, so what now? I know that I'm trying to actually resolve the, my hatred for the dog. I tr I'm trying to fix it, okay? So I can include that in my introduction now, something about me trying to fix it. Do you understand? Why are you writing your introduction first? When you haven't written your paper yet, you don't know what product you're selling. It's hard to sell the product. And that's where you do that is in the introduction you sell. So let's go sell it. So here we go. Here's my introduction. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an attention grabber. We're going to do a hook and we're going to give a little bit of background and historical information because we don't want to just drop the reader into, I hate my chihuahua. They're going to be like, what's wrong with you, you crazy woman? Okay. We want to get them interested. We want them to keep reading. Okay. So. Attention grabbers come in a lot of different things. Some people say, you know, give a quote, give an interesting quote. It depends on what, what kind of paper that you're writing, what kind of essay that you're writing. Um, questions often work really well because people want to, you know, they want the question answered and, and most likely you're going to be answering the question by writing your paper. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I chose to just ask the question and you can look up attention grabbers or hooks or whatever on the internet. You can look that stuff up. Okay. So here we go. I chose this as my attention grabber. Do you love your dog? Are you sure? Be honest. <laughs> well, I'm about to be completely and shockingly honest. Okay, you see how I'm luring them in? I'm selling them. I'm about to sell them. I hate my chihuahua. And they're like, <gasps> she hates her dog. Okay, I hate everything about him. I regret the day he first came into my life. There's my attention grabber and there's my background information and my historical information. I'm saying I hate my chihuahua, I hate everything about him, and I regret the day he first came into my life. I've also introduced my topic, which is my chihuahua, and I've introduced my general direction, which is that I hate him. You understand? Now I need what? My three main points. So let's bring this up. Okay, bring it up. My three main points. How do I put my thesis statement in there with my three main points? Okay, here we go. So I've added to bring in my three main points. Specifically, I hate that he is so gross that he makes horrible loud noises and that quite frankly, he scares me. Okay, but we're not done yet. We are not done yet because in my conclusion, when I answered the so what now, question. When I went somewhere with it, didn't I feel like I wanted to have some therapy? I was dressing him up in cute little clothes. I went somewhere with that. Our introductory paragraph tells the reader what you're going to say. 
and I want to tie up all my loose ends. That's why I wrote this last, because now I know what's coming because I already wrote it. So it's a lot easier for me to write the introductory paragraph, right? You see how my seven step method can be really good. So bringing this up, okay, what am I going to add to tie that in? I'm not proud of the way I feel, but I think the truth must be told so that I can come to terms with the situation. Okay. I'm not proud of it. I need therapy. Okay. But the truth must be told to the, so that I can come to terms with the situation that gives them a little hint. That's a little foreshadowing that right there at the end, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm, they don't know yet that I'm going to put them in little clothes. But it's a little foreshadowing. It's a little hint that there, I have some doubts about how I'm feeling. Okay. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that you know, in some way that this, the seven step method helped you. And speaking of seven steps, I don't want you to forget to proof and edit. That's the last step. Obviously we can't do that here, but you need to make sure step away from it. Give yourself a, a breath, uh, you know, take some time, give it to somebody else to look at. You want to fix all those typographical errors. You want to add some style. Again, today wasn't about style. It was about making sure that you were organized and you had great structure. And for those of you who are still mad at me about hating my chihuahua, I want you to go back. I want you to go back through this essay and I want you to really look at it. And everywhere that I had my chihuahua, I want you to put in your baby. Yeah, it was really about your baby. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I don't hate your baby. I'm sorry. That was, that was wrong. That was really wrong. I, I don't know your baby, but my chihuahua does. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Am I? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please like it and subscribe. All right. Have a great day.